Hey everybody, Sean from Media Assault here, and it's time once again for another movie review, and this time out I'm going to be taking a look at 2013's Oblivion. As you can see, I got the Target exclusive slipcover with the lenticular picture, and this also comes with a concept illustration booklet in it as well. It's real thin, it's really not worth much in terms of being a collectible, but uh, it's still pretty cool. Glad I picked it up, and it was the same price as the regular version, so whatever. <laughs> anyway, the movie itself is a science fiction film. Uh, it's a little, I would, I would call it kind of an atypical post-apocalyptic film that somehow manages yet to be derivative. Um, I'm not going to say too much about the plot because I don't want to spoil anything. I also don't want to say too much about which films it derives its plot from um, <clears throat> or plot points from, but it is very reminiscent of science fiction films from the 1970s and 1980s. They're little bits and pieces that you could say, oh, I remember something similar to that from a 1980s film, or in one case, a film from the 2010s. Um, but the film was directed by Joseph Kaczynski from his graphic novel, which was adapted for the screen by uh, Carl Gadjadustek, I'm probably saying that wrong, and Michael Arndt who is apparently, uh, that is apparently a um, pseudonym for another writer by the name of Michael something. Um, the film is beautiful in terms of cinematography and special effects. There's a lot of CGI, but they're, the effects are very well done. I can't give it anything but kudos for the way it looks. It's beautiful, especially on Blu-ray. Uh, I did get a chance to watch some of it on DVD and uh, the DVD just did not do it justice. It is a movie that needs to be seen on Blu-ray. It is a wonderfully, uh, wonderful looking film. The script, however, like I said, is very derivative, uh, and there are elements all over the place that call on references, and I read an interview with Joseph Kaczynski, and he said it was intended to be sort of a tribute to the science fiction films of the 1970s, and that is very apparent, especially films like Solaris, I would say. Um, because there are romantic overtones to it, as well as it's hardcore science fiction. But yet, it's really refreshing to see a science fiction movie being made from an original concept, or more or less an original concept, as derivative as it is, uh, but that doesn't rely on action, or doesn't try to be an action film. There is action in the movie, but it does not rely on it. It does not use it as a crutch to make it entertaining. Really, it's the concept and the whole um, idea of what's going on that really propels the film along and gets you to the end. I was never bored by it. Um, I wanted to see how it was going to turn out, even though I kind of figured out what was going on uh, about halfway through the film. I'd still recommend seeing it, although I can't rate it very highly. Um, it's still worth seeing. And the, the cast is really good. Tom Cruise is reliably likable. I'm not a fan of him personally, but as an actor, he usually does pretty damn good work. Here he's just his standard self. Uh, he's, you know, of course, he's very handsome and whatnot, but he does provide a, a fairly good performance in this film. Uh, the two female leads, Olga Kurlenko, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and um, Angela Riseborough, they are both very good. They're, of course, very easy on the eyes, but they are very good in their roles. Morgan Freeman receives sort of a co-billing or top billing in this. He's not in it very much. And the guy who plays the Kingslayer from Game of Thrones, whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, uh, he is in it. And he's kind of wasted. He's not in it for very long either. Uh, he's about in it about as much as Morgan Freeman is. Um, but both of those guys are good for what they do. So there you go. I would rate this film a 6.5 out of 10. I think it's worth your time if you're a science fiction fan. As long as you know going in, you're not going to see a really original concept. But it's still very well done, very well photographed, and pretty well acted. So check out Oblivion, now available on Blu-ray and DVD. Definitely check it out on Blu-ray if you can. Uh, it is probably a benchmark quality type title, I would say. Definitely one you can use to show off your system. And it sounds phenomenal. Uh, so there you go. That's my review of Oblivion from 2013. Stay tuned to the channel for more uh, movie reviews and whatnot coming soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take it easy.